I mean, I mean, you're you're right about him, though. I mean, you know, you can't pay a guy a couple million dollars a year and expect him to be telling the the people the truth. I mean, he's he he gives you some truth, and he does rip off Alex Jones and yourself a lot. And but at the same time, he's also mixing in a lot of disinformation. And that's what he's all about. Period. Yeah. And uh, speaking of disinformation agents, I mean, I. I know you have a very, very uh, bad view about Julian Assange. I, I, I'm still kind of on the fence about him, Bob. I, I see him as part of him. I see kind of like in, in the paradigm of being an, an angel, but at the same time, I do see things that point the other direction. Well, at this point in time, I don't think it's important anymore. Um, the charges brought against him are terrible, ridiculous. Um, I don't even want to go into it on the air. It's disgusting. Yeah. And um, it's just another setup. The thing that's important about him is that they're going to use what he did to try to take away what we have, and that is access to the Internet. That's what this is really all about. I think it was the PSYOP program put together by the CIA and the Mossad. I'm guessing. But then again, I did work in counterintelligence, and um, I do know how those things work, and I know lots about the things that they do and how they do them. In fact, the government, to this very day, is very disturbed that they ever trained me in the first place. But, you know, that's what you, that's what you get when you got a draft and you get somebody with 185 IQ and you want him to do this work, you don't know whether he's with you or against you. You know, people like that think. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you, you see, I mean, what you're talking about is very true. I mean, you look what happen, what's happening in the Senate. You have Senators Enzyme, Lieberman, and Brown. Uh, they're pushing this anti-WikiLeaks bill, the uh, Securing Human Intelligence and Enforcing Lawful Dissemination Act, a.k.a. SHIELD. I mean, that, I mean not, not just, I mean, we can put WikiLeaks aside. Uh, they're going to use this law, if they pass it, to go after the entire alternative media. That's right. You're absolutely correct. We're talking most people Chapman, don't know that was... because most people don't know anything. Yep. They think they do, but they don't. Yep. Uh, we're about to go to break, Bob. We have a final segment coming up with you. Uh, Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And if you aren't a subscriber to The International Forecaster, um, I think you should uh, get on over there right now and do it because uh, that is where all the really important information is for you. So log on to theinternationalforecaster.com. ASAP. Bob Chapman is my guest. You are listening to Freedom Files live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files. Final segment with Bob Chapman. The International Forecaster.com is his website. And, Bob, not only do we have this new bill in the Senate, S.H.I.E.L.D., it's a very, you know, you know, police state name, S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, they're trying to push this, uh, Senators Enzyme, Lieberman, and Brown. You also have the FCC commissioner uh, pushing to regulate the news. He wants broadcasters to be subject to a, quote-unquote, public values test and wants, a, wants this test to make broadcasters' license renewal contingent upon proof that they meet the, quote-unquote, pers- you know, prospect set of the... Um, federal criteria. I mean, <laughs> it's sounding more and more like the Soviet Union here every day. And you're right. Uh, and I, I wonder how they're going to control all the other countries of the world. Because, you know, this radio and the Internet, television is a worldwide thing. Are they going to bludgeon every country into doing the same thing? I don't think that's going to be easy. And so I think what's going to happen is that people are going to set up in foreign countries, like I did long ago. And what are they going to do about what I have to say? 
they going to try to jam my phone lines or are they going to try to take me down off the internet when my service is in another country? I think they got, even if they pass legislation, there's always a way around it. And so it's not going to be successful, even if they get it done. And I don't think they get it done. Because this is the kind of thing that would really be a catalyst for revolution. Because the users of the Internet, most of them are under 45 years old. And the great majority of them who really use the Internet more than anybody else are between the ages of 17 and 30. And who fights wars? People between 17 and 30. So I don't know that they want to do that. And I don't know if they get a pass, but they're going to try. And even if they get what they want, it could mean the end of their existence. Yeah, I, I think the, the more and more they, they push on us, Bob, the harder and harder eventually we're going to you know, push back right on them. And, I mean, that's what I don't think they understand. I mean, right now the American people aren't in the streets like they've been in uh, Greece and Spain. Well, they're, they're, they're going to start going on in Spain and Portugal but they, like they did in France a few months ago and what they're doing now in London. Eventually it's going to happen here, and when it does happen, uh, it's going to be like a sleeping giant. Well, I think they've awakened the giant in Europe, Europe. and uh, it'll contribute to the fall of the euro and the European Union, and it could lead to the overthrow of some of the governments there. I mean, countries like Spain that say, hey, there's nothing wrong. Uh, give me a break, will you? Like, people aren't that stupid. Uh, Zapatero, I mean, he, he is he naive? I don't think so. He knows what he's doing. And German, German leadership know the the explosive situation that could develop. You know what their problem is? They're too successful. The rest of Europe doesn't like them because they work 12 hours a day, very hard. They're very inventive. They don't want the euro and they don't want the European Union, and I don't blame them. I lived there for a long time. And uh, the main thrust of what the Germans don't like is the euro, uh, of course, in the euro, the European Union. But more importantly, they don't like bailing everybody else out over and over again. And that's what's been going on. And the frightening part about it for Germany, France, Holland, and, uh, and Austria is that they all could easily go broke supporting the near dwells of Europe. And that is a very possible situation. And they know that. And that's why Frau Merkel has said, or Chancellor Merkel, I should say, instead of Mrs. <laughs> um, she said, no more money. You know, you got a trillion dollars there. You're not going to get any more. And, of course, Deutsche Bank, which is one of the aluminous banks, are quaking in their books because they're bankrupt. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's only a matter of time before Chancellor Merkel is you know, kicked out as well. I mean, her party's losing ground in Germany. Uh, but what, what do you think, Bob, is going to, in the final minute we have here, what do you think is gonna, it's going to take to finally get the American people riled up and in the streets like they've been in Greece and France and uh, London? Millions of unemployed that don't know what to do. They can't afford uh, to eat. They've been thrown out of their homes. There's nothing that is more important to revolution than an empty stomach. And uh, that's what's going to bring it on. And I said this 20 years ago, whatever. And that's the way it'll happen. You look at big changes in history, that's why. I mean, look at the French Revolution. People were starving. Marie Antoinette supposedly said, let them eat cake. 
But the point is, did you see what the result was? There were 30 million people in France at the time. 300,000 lost their heads. Yep, including Marie Antoinette. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and Final uh, segment, uh, how can people get the international forecaster, Bob? Well, they can go to theinternationalforecaster.com. That's F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. Uh, they can go to uh, www.intforecaster.com. That's intforecaster.com. If they have a question, they can email me, Bob, B-O-B, at intforecaster.com. Or they can call 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. And they can get a free subscription. There's an offer there, and it's fantastic. If you want to be a subscriber, that's the way to go.